Welcome to Maze Lico Challenge. Today's problem is course schedule. There are a total number of num courses you have to take, labeled 0 to num courses minus 1. Uh, some of these courses have prerequisites. For example, uh, to take course 0, you have to take course 1. So if you've been to college, um, you're well aware of this kind of thing. Like 0 to 1, that represents that you have to take 1 to take class 0. Given the total number of courses and list of prerequisite pairs, is it possible for you to finish all courses? The very first thing I saw with um, this prerequisite thing is this is definitely a directed graph problem. And so graphs, yay, I'm not very good at them, but um, luckily this one's not too bad. Um, but the question confused me, like, why wouldn't it be possible to finish all these courses? Like, as long as the courses are there, like, who cares how many prerequisites there are? But if you look at this example, it hit me, oh, okay, I see what they mean. Uh, if you want to take course one, you have to take course zero. But if you want to take course zero, you have to take course one, right? And that's impossible because both of them have the same prerequisite. There's this weird loop that occurs that makes it impossible to take either of these two classes. Uh, so this is definitely a cycle detection problem. We should represent our prerequisites in a directed graph. and write some sort of algorithm that checks to see if there, any cycle exists. And if it does, then we're going to return false. And if it doesn't, we should return true. Uh, so let's go to the whiteboard and I'll show you what I mean. Here's a representation of our directed graph. 0 can go to 1, 0 can go to 2, and 1 can go to 2. As we've stated before, this is a cycle detection problem. If there were a cycle anywhere in this directed graph, that would make it impossible to take any of those classes because each one of those has a prerequisite. And how are we going to take the class if we can never take the prerequisite, right? So um, if there was a cycle like this, we can't take classes 0 or 1 because 0 requires 1 and 1 requires 0. So that's the problem that we're trying to solve. So for now, let's forget this. First, let's represent this graph as a adjacency list. So 0 can go to, as I've stated before, it can go to 1 and 2. 1 can go to 2. And 2 can't go anywhere. So how could we create an algorithm to see if there's a cycle? Well, let's just think about it very straightforward. What if we just started at node 0 and did a depth first search while having passing like a tracker that tells us where we're where, where we've been so far so if we start at zero we can say okay we've been at zero now let's go to two well we've been to two and now the cycle ends right now let's pop that off and go from zero um, to one and we'll say we visited one and we visited two if at any point this node that we're um, <clears throat> is next in our recursive stack is in our tracker. So say like we did this and we go from 0 to 1 and now we go from 1 to 0 and we check, hey, have we already visited this place? And it is. We've already visited it. Then we know a cycle exists. And that's the basic idea behind this. Like just call, do a depth first search recursively and track which nodes you've already visited. And that way you can determine whether um, there's a cycle or not. Uh, and just make sure that once you finish the recursive stack, like you can pop off where you visited off the tracker. Now that we have our intuition to how to solve this problem, let's go ahead and code it out. The very first thing we want to do is create our adjacency list. So let's create a adjacency list and we're going to make that a default dict with a list as its default type. And for all of our courses uh, with the prerequisite in prerequisite, prerequisites, we're going to say, hey, from this pre, where can we go? We can go to our courses. And so now we have our JC list. Next, we want to create a helper method that's going to do a depth first search to detect if there's a cycle or not. So I'm just going to call that cycle. And for now, let's leave it a pass because uh, we can go back to that. Next, how do we traverse through our entire um, 
list of courses and check to see if there's a cycle at each node, right? So for n in range of num courses, we're going to check, hey, is there a cycle? So let's pass cycle for n. Um, and we're also going to need to pass in some sort of tracker, right? So I'm going to just call that tracker, I suppose. And let's say tracker is going to be a dictionary. So if cycle, if we take a cycle, we're going to return false. You cannot finish all these because there's a cycle here. Otherwise, we can get through our entire loop and we'll return a true. So finally, we want to create our tracker method, or I'm sorry, our that first search helper. So how do we do that? Well, let's first indicate in our tracker that yes, we've been here. I'm just going to make that equal to a true. And we're going to go down our adjacency list for this prerequisite class for n in adjacency list of node. We're going to check, hey, have we um, been here before? So if n in tracker or otherwise recall, um, like continue our defer search. So that's gonna be n tracker. And if this is the case, we've um, visited this place before in our path, then we wanna return a true, because yes, there's a cycle. Otherwise, we can get through our entire loop and we'll return a true, or I'm sorry, return a false. But one thing that we have to remember is we're gonna have to pop off the node each time um, that we finish our path because say that we go down one path at a node and we visit all these nodes and now we're going to recursively go back and check the other path well technically all those nodes we visited before we haven't visited in this path right so we're going to pop that off from the tracker so let's just make sure this gets accepted and it does get accepted one thing I want to show, though, is it's not the most efficient solution. In fact, it only beats 10% of sub submissions, so not great. Um, and the reason for that is we're making some repetitive calls here because technically, if we go down a path and we've already checked this node as well, like we don't actually need to check all the paths in that node again because we've already checked in this recursive like depth for search whether there's a cycle or not. So in order to avoid that, you could have another, um, I guess, stack or dictionary to check to see if you've already visited. So I'll create a visited dictionary here and say, all right, we'll pass that in our, our method. And each time we visit a node, we'll also mark that as true. And that way, when we uh, check this, we can first check to see, hey, is if n not invisited, oops, and then check our um, depth of search. This will save us some time. We can also add that here as well in our in our for loop. What we'll do is say mm, if n not invisited. Uh, keep spelling that and then we can call our cycle uh, and we'll return true if that's the case else if uh, n um, if it's in our tracker then we can also return true here so let me just submit this and see if that's better if n invalid cycle if n oh whoops and non visited if n non visited yeah love those typos and there you go so that's accepted as well and you can see that that is significantly faster it's going to be at like beating 80 percent of python submissions yeah so hopefully that gives you some intuition of how to solve this unfortunately like adding that visited tracker confuse like makes it a little bit more confusing um but i think once you get the idea of how a cycle is detected by just going down the path and seeing if we visit it or not, like that should help you understand these problems because cycle detections are very common and uh, something that you will, uh, you really shouldn't understand. So thank you.